Okay, this is a superior view of the skull with the cranium removed, and I'm going to discuss the markings you would find as you go from anterior to posterior. The first important marking that you'll find is the Christigalli. It means coxcomb, and it is the top of the ethmoid bone. The valleys on either side of the Christigalli are called the cribiform plate. There are tiny holes in each cribiform plate called olfactory foramina that neurons that give you your sense of smell pass through and go down to the nose. Then as we move down to the sphenoid bone, it's this large butterfly shaped bone right here. It has a couple markings to learn. This is the cella turcica. It means Turk saddle and it is where the pituitary gland of the brain rests. You can also see the optic canals from this view. This is one optic canal for the optic nerve and this is the other optic canal. Okay, moving farther down, the next important marking you see, this is the jugular foramen here and here. This is an important hole for the passage of the jugular veins as well as several cranial nerves. The next hole, large hole that you see is the foramen magnum. You can just barely see the hypoglossal canal if you tilt the skull like this. And the hypoglossal canal is for the hypoglossal nerve to exit. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over to an inferior view and look at some of these markings. I'm going to remove the mandible for this part. Okay, here we go. So, starting up here, this is the maxilla bone all the way to right about here. And then this last part of the hard palate here and here is called the palatine bones. Then as you move down, the next marking that you need to learn, this is the carotid canal here and here and the carotid canal is the passageway for the carotid artery. You can also see the occipital condyles here and here. These articulate with the atlas of the vertebrae. Of course, here's the large frame and magnum. If you go lateral from the occipital condyles, you come to another hole called the stylomastoid foramen. It's directly in front of this large process called the mastoid process. On this side, you can see it as well. The mastoid process and then the stylomastoid foramen. Again, you can see that hypoglossal canal on the underside of the occipital condyle here and here. This is also a good view for the jugular foramen here and here. You can see the jugular foramen again. Next, I'll turn the skull on a side view and you can look at a few markings here. Mastoid process is right here. This is the external auditory canal. This is the zygomatic arch. It's made up of two bones. The temporal bone, which is here to right here and includes the mastoid process. The temporal bone extends to about here and then the rest of the zygomatic arch is actually part of the zygomatic bone. Now we're looking at a front view and you can see right into the eye sockets and at the very back of the eye sockets are two large holes called the superior orbital fissures. Those are the passageways for cranial nerves that move the eyeball around. Um, another marking you can see is the lacrimal fossa which drains the tears. The nasal bone, so the bridge of the nose. You can see the maxilla bone extending from the bottom of the eye orbit down. This is the alveolar margin where the teeth um, enter into their sockets. Then you look into the nasal cavity. The bottom bone right here is called the vomer. On either side of the nasal cavity, you can see a small bone protrusion called the inferior nasal conchae. 
Those are turbinates that help make the air swirl around so it warms up, humidifies, and gets cleaned. The top marking right here is called the perpendicular plate. It's a marking of the ethmoid bone. So you can see that the ethmoid bone is a funny rectangular bone with some protrusions on it that extends from the perpendicular plate all the way up to the crystagalli. Now we can look at the mandible. The mandible has two important markings. This is called the con mandibular condyle. It articulates with the temporal bone to form your temporal mandibular joint. And this marking is the coronoid process, which important muscles attach to this to help close your jaw. The mandible also has an alveolar margin on it. I'll show you how they articulate. Right here. This fossa right here is where the mandibular condyle articulates. And then you can see that muscles that attach from the coronoid process can attach to the temporal fossa of the temporal bone to close the mouth. I think that's all of them.